Hi, my name is Armando and I'm a recovering drug addict, alcoholic. Um, I struggle with anger issues. And I just want to open up a pr in prayer before we start any, before I share what God's done for me. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for helping me share this testimony, God. That you allow this video to touch others, God, in a way that that's that hasn't been done before, God. And I want to thank you, Father God, and I ask that you continue to be with the viewers, Lord. And that you let them know, Lord, this is the truth, God, that you show me, Lord. God, I say this in your son's precious name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, I'm here to tell you guys a little bit about what God did for me in January of 2011. And um, so let's get this started. So I'm going to give you a little short story of um, ecstasy and what happened to me when I was taking, taking that drug, uh, doing drugs too. I would like to thank God for saving me that day. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. So thank you. The day the day before I took the drug, God had his God has had God had his disciples come to warn me and my friends something and well we tried and they tried to preach the gospel to us um a day before we before my first time taking ecstasy, so and we didn't listen. That same night, cops came and told me not. The cops uh, came to a, the apartment complex and told me not to be in there no more. They said that the next time they catch me in there, they're gonna get me for trespassing. And well, I can tell you one thing: I'm paying for my consequences the next day of not listening. So the next day, my friends they got some pill called ecstasy, and um, I didn't know what it was at the time. So it was. It was weird. So we all waited until my friend came outside and while he while I was waiting for him to come outside, I, I went to a friend's house to go smoke some weed and well after that, after we smoked and everything, I left his apartment and as I was walking down the stairs, there was a cross laying on just a, a cross on the the staircase and as I walked by the cross fell it fell right off and so I went after that I didn't really think any of it until the next day so, so as I after I left my friend's house um, I ended up uh, going to the guy my other friend who got the ecstasy pills and he came outside and asked me if I wanted a, an ecstasy pill but he didn't say it like that. He just said he, I guess they call it this. And I go, I ask him what it, what does it do? You know, he said it's like a muscle relaxer. And I said okay, you know. And as I took that one, I didn't really feel it. So about an hour passed, and he asked me if I wanted another one, and I said yeah because I didn't feel the first one. So I took the second one, and then five. About five minutes later, he asked me if I wanted another one, and I said, I'll save it for tomorrow. He said, no, I'll go ahead and take it. So I went ahead and took it. I ended up, after that, drinking about a big 42-ounce uh, cup of water. And I'll tell you that, <sighs> I'm going to tell you right now. After that, I started feeling the pill, you know. My whole body was getting out of control. Like I felt like that pill was controlling me. So I ended up leaving from the house that we were at, you know, where everybody was chilling at. And, you know, my teeth were grinding. I threw my sack at my friend and asked him for a cigarette. And as I, he asked me, are you thizzing? I go, yeah, dude. And he goes, oh, man, I wish I felt like you, you know. And so as I walked home, it felt like I ran home, my teeth were grinding, and as, as soon as I got home, when I got in there, I turned the AC down to 60 degrees, about 60 degrees, and I wanted to use the restroom for some reason, and well, it's, it's kind of hard for me to share because most people won't believe me, but 
I really don't care, you know. I got God who believes me. So I find myself holding on to the bathroom sink. And as I'm holding on to the sink, I'm looking in the mirror. And as I'm looking in the mirror, I finally make this this weird, weird evil sound. Uh, and as I was making that sound, my teeth were grinding, and finally something just hit hit me. You know, just hit my senses. Like, what the heck is going on? And as soon as I finally hit, like that hit my nerve. You know, like snap out of it. I took a step back outside the bathroom because my my room was right here and the bathroom was like right there or just right across from each other and here goes the story I finally when I got right there I was the bathroom I was looking in the mirror my the black thing in your eye it was my eye that thing was at least like maybe about like that huge it was huge and I was, I was looking at it and finally I seen the truth I want to share a little quick verse with you guys right here that God talks about in John chapter 8 verse 32 then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free and you know the truth hurt man as, as I was looking in there I seen something evil evil inside me and I started I started asking God, God, please forgive that child for your sin and I kept saying it over and over. And the thing in the mirror, like I was smiling, you know, and my teeth were grinding and then, you know, as I was as it was like it felt like there was something else in the mirror. It wasn't me. And that person was smiling. And honestly I can tell you right now, I met the devil that day. I met the devil. And he was smiling because I was about to die. I was about to, I was about to overdose off ecstasy because I was an idiot and took it. And God tried to tell me the, the day before not to take it. So that thing in the mirror was smiling, but as soon as I said, "God, please forgive that child for he has sinned," that smile went away. That smile started turning evil, mad. Makes you know, I feel something pull me to my room, all the way to my room, and I'm sitting here, getting on my on my back, and my knees were starting to push me to the bathroom, and I'm sitting here going, God, please forgive me for I have sinned, please God, please Lord, and you know, it kept pushing me, and finally I said, God. I'm sorry Lord that I have sinned I'm sorry God that I disobeyed my mom I disrespected her I don't help her around the house and I didn't do anything for her you know all I did was disrespect her and finally I, I find myself curled up holding onto a pillow crying tears just coming out crying and finally I felt something else something just like a miracle happened I felt God come into my life at that moment and at that moment I was saved did I deserve it? no and it was really amazing to know that God still loved me I, uh, I used to go to church six years ago before I took this drug and I ended up leaving the church because we ended up moving so finally for, I, I can't really explain how but I felt God come in I felt the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit got me up and the thing in the mirror was still right there mad just giving me evil looks and then I through God's strength and power I walked in that bathroom I stared that thing right in the face and I said I am forgiven and I first said when I walked in there I first said guess what and that thing in the mirror said what 
in an evil voice, you know. And I said, I'm forgiven. And it, it said, and then it got really mad. Like, I, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything so evil before. It was really pissed. And it said, No. And it brought me close to it. Like, close to eye contact. And told me, You'll be back. And it told me I'll be back. And I didn't know what that meant. So, and then finally I came out, out of the bathroom. And I got on my knees. And my shoulders touched the carpet. And as my shoulders touched the carpet, it came all the way back up. And it felt like something left me. And at that moment, it felt like my room was heaven. And the bathroom was hell. It was really amazing. I've my whole mindset changed at that instant. I didn't really want to hang out with my friends or anything, but I ended up going back across the street after that. As soon as I woke up from that, you know, I woke up. My my whole shirt was soaked with sweat. My pants were soaked with sweat. My friends came and they said all my friends were tripping and they're like, "Dude, it looked like some exor uh, some exorcist stuff," you know. And they told me to take a cold shower and that wears off the drug. So after that, um, I ended up going back to the apartment complex, and we were about to smoke up blunt, smoke a blunt, and they were breaking up the bud. And the same cops before the night, before this, the night before, came, but he came with at least six cops this time. And he came up to me and as he was walking out. He said, "Well, Armando again, huh?" And at that moment, I knew I was in trouble. You know, finally. I feel like, you know, I'm going in this time, you know. I got away with it all. And they handcuffed me and they searched me and everything. And they called my mom, which was a shocker. And she came down and she picked me up and they, they wanted to take me in. They just told me not to come back in there, but I didn't listen. After, then, and then after, after that, a week later, a week later, I ended up, well, the next day after the drug overdose, I didn't go to school. I ended up ditching, and I ended up getting a job. But I spent, like, an hour and a half at the park just thinking, did that stuff really happen? And, like, I'm getting the chills, you know, at the park, just, just freaking out. Just, like, did that stuff really happen? Is it true? A month later, at, uh, no, not a month later, a week later, when I told you... That thing in the mirror said I'll be back. My friends ended up, my friends ended up getting the pill again. I didn't want to do it. I said no, and I kept saying no, and I kept saying no, and I kept saying no. But they just, they kept, they said, come on, man, this time it won't be like that, you know. I ended up taking the pill again. And this time, I felt so low. I felt like I didn't, I didn't deserve my mom, you know. I, I felt like I let her down too much, and, and, almost killed myself. I was thinking about jumping off of a two-story building face first. But then this voice came in. This this voice came in my head. It was, I don't know what it was. It felt like, I don't know if it was in my head or someone. It was like whispering in my ear and it said, child, that is what he wants. And immediately I got the chills and went back inside and started praying. And then after a month after that, we ended up moving two miles away from the apartment complex. Ended up, my mom ended up uh, getting the same house that we lived in six years ago after I left the church and back to the same church six years ago. Man, that's awesome, you know. That's God right there. I would love to let you guys know that this is based on a true story, whether you guys believe it or not. As long as I know it's true, it's true. And that's drugs, man. I have a purpose in life. He's called me. He's called me to do His will. I'm saved, and I don't, I didn't deserve it. I wasn't really saved. I've only been seven months clean since the June. He introduced me to Celebrate Recovery, and I'm ready to share it with you guys. The next episode will be about Celebrate Recovery and how things have happened. Thank you.